Welcome to Lecture 1 of Biology 116 entitled Classification and Virology. Both of these topics are a bit unrelated with each other but are combined in this first lecture for the purposes of saving time. We're going to be beginning our understanding of Biology 116 by looking at classification. Much of the stuff that we look at in classification has already been seen or done before, and so it will be mainly a review. So to begin, we'll start by looking at classification, and we'll entitle this first flowchart classification Roman numeral 1. So in order to understand classification, the first and foremost thing we have to understand is the idea of a species, because this is what we will be classifying, what is classified in terms of this study. And the species is just simply going to be something that we already know. Um, it's the basic unit of classification. Just like the cell is the basic unit of life, a species is the basic unit of classification. So we'll write that down. So if this is the basic unit of classification, we must have some other concepts to understand behind the idea of classifying species. And those other concepts include the idea of taxonomy, which we'll do over here. So what is taxonomy? This is not new to us. We've seen this in Biology 115 uh, pretty briefly, but we'll just go over the main components of what taxonomy is. Taxonomy can be described as the naming and classifying of organisms. Very simply. Naming plus classifying of organisms. And so when we are naming and when we are classifying, we're going to be using the idea of taxonomy in this classification technique. Most of taxonomy is based off of the system known as binomial nomenclature. And this is something we again covered before, but we'll briefly go over the major components and rules of this classification and naming system that is taxonomy via binomial nomenclature. Binomial nomenclature is all about using a unique two-part name in your naming and classifying. So there's a unique two-part name in this classification technique. Binomial meaning two, bi meaning two, and the nomial referring to uh, the name and nomenclature meaning classifying and naming. So this unique two-part name has both a genus and it will also have plus a specific epithet is what we call it. Specific epithet. And once we have both of those things, we have then undergone binomial nomenclature, let's say. Um, the best way to understand binomial nomenclature is to briefly go over and understand the major rules associated with this classification technique. The rules are simple. Number one, you have to use the Latin language. And so all of these uh, binomial nomenclature names that we have of species will be uh, utilizing the Latin language. You will always see, especially if it's in a computer uh, form, this binomial nomenclature name. It will probably be, and should be at least, in italics. Or if it's uh, written down, it's typically underlined if you're being very, very specific. In addition, the genus will be capitalized, so that's our third rule. The genus name, since it's a two-part name, the genus is always going to be capitalized, and it, it can also be abbreviated, so we'll say capitalized. Um, it can be abbreviated as well. Sometimes it's just one letter, and it is also the unique part to this name. It is unique. It is not seen by any other species. The genus is unique. And finally, the specific epithet, which will be our rule number four, is in lowercase and it's not unique. So we'll say specific epithet is going to be lowercase as opposed to the capitalized genus. So we'll say lowercase this is our specific epithet, and it is lowercase, and it is all not unique. 
other species may have the same specific epithet, but they certainly will not have the same genus. Basic example that I can give you, uh, something you're probably quite familiar with, uh, would be Homo sapiens. So I'll capitalize this, a first genus area right here. This is my very specific um, genus, and then we have our specific epithet, which is just a describing sort of name, uh, Homo sapiens. And of course, I'm going to underline it because I'm writing, and thus I can't italicize. So that's our basic premise and idea behind taxonomy, name and classifying. Um, as fun as that is, we're also going to be looking at the basic idea behind classification itself. So let's conclude this first classification video by understanding what classification, now that we have a technique and a tool and methods to classify and name, what classification itself truly is in terms of why we need to do it. So. When we look at classification, we need to understand it because we have to arrange, let's say, species. Species are typically going to be arranged to uh, definitely show or to show that, uh, to show these evolutionary relationships. That's the key idea here. When we classify things, especially through a phylogenetic concept, which we'll understand in just a second, we arrange them to show these very important evolutionary relationships. Um, and once we arrange them to show the evolutionary relationships, uh, we also arrange them to make sure that, that they're also understood. Plus, understand relationships, let's say. Understand relationships. And this is between species, within species, whatever. Uh, this is the major key part of classification and its purpose. Um, again, the species is the basic unit that we're going to be working our classification off of, but other types of studies that fall under this idea of showing evolutionary relationships and understanding those relationships uh, would mainly be the idea of understanding what phylogeny is and understanding and studying this uh, concept of phylogeny. This is basically going to be looking at evolutionary history of organisms. And again, this evolutionary history will of course show up and give you evolutionary relationships simply by the idea of looking at it from a historical standpoint. How do things relate to each other over time, in the past, in the present? In addition to phylogeny, we also look at this idea of systematics in classification techniques. Systematics is a different idea, but still important because this is the true hard-nosed process of classifying organisms. So systematics will be definitely utilizing, will definitely be utilizing binomial nomenclature and this naming and classifying that we established prior in the taxonomy section. So this is the hard-nosed process of classifying organisms. And once we have the organisms classified, once we show their evolutionary history, we are well on our way to understanding and showing evolutionary relationships between and within species, our basic unit of classification. And finally, the major idea to understand is that we also like to put things in a hierarchical classification scheme or scenario. And this is mainly because when we look at hierarchical classification, we are able to distinguish things that are above and below each other. In essence, a hierarchy involves looking at things that are at various levels. That's what a hierarchy is all about. So we can define hierarchy very briefly as something that involves or has various levels to it. And classification is no exception to this various levels concept of hierarchy. What we can understand is that when we look at a hierarchical system, let's say in animals or plants or whatever it may be, most of the time what we notice is that each level down, let's say in quotes over here, uh, let's say if we move a level down in our hierarchy, if we start at a large, broad level like domain and go all the way down to like a much more specific level like family or genus or kingdom, whatever it may be, each level down is going to be more exclusive. So we'll write is more exclusive. And that would mean that each level up would be more inclusive. So be uh, capable of understanding the distinction between going up the hierarchy and going down the hierarchy in terms of classification of species. 
Finally, uh, by looking at this and understanding this idea that each level down is more exclusive, we can conclude by understanding that each species, and I'll just squeeze this in over here, each species, and I mean many species, so S double P for this situation, each species at, let's say, whatever X level that we're talking about or understanding or trying to uh, look at as a systematist or a phylogeneticist, we are going to understand that each species at whatever level it may be shares all characteristics necessary to be at that level. So shares all characteristics, so let's say like mammals. Mammals have very specific characteristics like fur and uh, mammary glands and feeding the young milk. Those types of things are characteristics that are shared by all mammals. Thus all of those who are all species in this level of mammals, okay, of this mammalia level, are going to share all those characteristics of that level. So that's it for our introduction to classification. Again, species is our basic unit that we're working off of, and from this we get taxonomy as a study of naming and classifying, and we also have to understand that classification plays a big role in our overall understanding of what it means to look at evolution, specifically those relationships and how they develop and why they develop through the hierarchical systems that we have seen many times before in biology.